This is Roma welcoming you to get on board the train of the parables of Jesus Christ as depicted in the Gospels. What are we hearing nowadays? Cryptocurrency, bitcoins, lot of marketing and lot of advertisement is going on. In the name of Jesus Christ also, digital money, not real money, virtual money. And we hear about Jesus coin also. Jesus coin, a utility coin. It's a utility token with the global access to Jesus that is safer and faster than ever before. We are we decentralizing Jesus and providing miracles exclusively to Jesus coin owners. What are these days? Dishonest money dwindles away, but who so ever gathers money, saves money, little by little makes it grow. Lot of discussion about money, uh, economy and currency and the coinage we are getting into now. But Jesus was cleaning the temple. He expelled money changers from the temple in the four canonical gospels, he called them as converting the church into the house of trade and turning the temple into den of thieves. Let's get into some mathematics and economy as well. At the time of Jesus, what was the currency? Let me share with you. The talent of gold. Talent of gold. And then we have the talent of silver. One talent amounts to 6,000 dinari, weighing about 35 kilograms of silver. And we have the record of all the gold for the sanctuary being 29 talents. And we also know David's crown weighed one talent of gold and Solomon's, the richest man Solomon's annual revenue was 666 talents of gold. As a punishment in the book of Revelation, we have great hail fell from heaven, each ball weighing about one talent. Those days we have the talents of copper as well. So this is the coinage in the time of Jesus Christ, talent being the highest measure of currency. Talent of gold, Talents of silver. And talent of copper. Hope you like it. Some mathematics also goes into that. There is one thing called denarii, a smaller unit. 6,000 denarii amounts to one talent. When people tested Jesus asking about paying tax, uh, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Then Jesus asked, show me a coin used for the tax. They gave him a denarius. Whose head is on this? It is the head of G Caesar. Whose title? It is Caesar Augustus. So, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and render unto God whatever belongs to God. This is the denarius. And there you are, shekel. We all know that notorious Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus 
for 30 pieces of silver, each piece supposed to be a shekel. This is the shekel. And we have the mina. 60 shekels made one mina and 60 minas make one talent. Some commerce and something about the coinage and currency and economy as well as the mathematics. And there is the smallest, least of all, it is gera. It is one fifth of a denarius and 20 geras make one shekel. This is gera. And there is one thing called beka. One beka amounts to 10 cents. And also it is one beka is half the value of a shekel. Then comes the cent. One cent. We all know the story of the poor widow who put a few small coins and a few cents. She has put more than all the contributors in the treasury, Jesus said. They did from the surplus, whereas the poor old Edo, she did from her poverty. She contributed her whole livelihood. She contributed what all she had. Well, this is something about the currency, the coinage, the value in the time of Jesus Christ. Now, there's, now let us get into the parable sort of thing. Let me share with you the parable. To make it a little bit more interesting, I would like to share with you a story depict, illustrated in the pictures. Peter asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times should I forgive him? Not seven times, Jesus replied, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with his servants, the amount which his servants had borrowed from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought to him. He owed him a millions of dollars. This is the debtor who owned the king. 10,000 talents. He could not pay. So his master ordered that he should be sold along with his wife, children and everything he owned to pay his debt. But the servant fell down before his master and begged him. Master, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with the pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. So my dear friends, 10,000 talents of debt was forgiven. Now let us see the next scene. Then, when the man, the same man, left the king, he went to his fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. It means hundred denarii. The 
the man owned him only hundred dinar, right? He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. Hundred dinar is not a big amount. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged him, pleaded this man for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor would not agree. He would not wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid. When some of the servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy? Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? That the angry king sent the man to the prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. He was arrested and taken to the prison and he was put behind the bars. That is what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. So this is about forgiving. How many times should we forgive the people against whom we hold some complaints? Seven times? No. Seventy times seven. We have to forgive them. In our daily prayer we say, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And what, is, what should be the, our attitude in prayer? I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that you have received it, it will be yours. Belief is something which will deliver our wish, which will fulfill our wish and which will answer our prayer. But when you are praying, First, forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in Heaven will forgive your sins. We have seen these cases of forgiveness right in the first book of the Holy Bible in the Old Testament, Genesis. Chapter 50, the last chapter, 17 to 21 verses, I'll read for you. Jesus, Joseph reassures his brothers after burying Jacob, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who accompanied him to his father's burial. Joseph's brother, brothers were fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him. Before your father died, they sent a message to jo Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say this to you. Please forgive your brothers 
for the great wrong they did to you. For their sin is in treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive us of our sin. Did not Joseph forgive his brothers? He reassured, reassured, <coughs> excuse me. Don't be afraid of me, said Joseph to his brothers. Am I a God that I can punish you? <coughs> you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. <coughs> he brought me to the position, to this position, so that I could save the lives of many people. Don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. He reassured them by speaking kindly to them. <clears throat> what kind of forgiveness it is. We see how people treated Jesus. They stripped the Savior and put a scarlet robe on him. They wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head, placed a reed stick in his right hand as a scepter, mocked and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews! Finally, they spit on him, grabbed the stick, and struck him on the head of Jesus with that stick. But what did Jesus say? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Can we say the same to those who hurt us? Can we say the same? Yes, I think, my dear friends, we can say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. Actually, in the book of Mika, we can see forgiveness is itself, by itself, is the miracle. What is that? What type of miracle is it? Forgiveness is the miracle of a fresh start. Anytime you can give a chance, second chance, you can have a first fresh start. That is the miracle. Forgiveness is the miracle of a fresh start, a new beginning, a second chance. On Mount Sinai, God revealed himself as a God who delights in forgiving sins. God himself delights in forgiving sins. Because of his compassion, because of his love, because of his grace, and because of his mercy, God offers pardon for our sins by putting our sins out of sight, out of reach, out of mind, and out of the very existence he brought out our sins. Christ's shedding of his blood on the cross for the final and ultimate sacrifice where Jesus took all our sins, Jesus took all our selfishness, Jesus took all our hatred, Jesus took all our deceit and Jesus took all of our pride and nailed them all to the cross so that those who believe might be declared innocent. We are innocent. We, the sinners, are declared innocent. And we are declared free from the sin's controlling power. We are free from the power of the sin. If we confess our sins, acknowledging our guilt and 
acknowledging our responsibility, God can be counted on. We can count God to forgive us. Yes. If we confess our sins, acknowledge our guilt, and acknowledge our responsibility, God can be counted on to forgive us. Why do you talk so much about forgiveness? What is that forgiveness? Forgiveness is both an extravagant as well as a precious thing, my dear friends. It's an extravagant thing and it's the most precious thing, the attitude of forgiving others. And forgiveness is relational, it is reciprocal. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And forgiveness is reliant. You can rely on forgiveness. If we forgive others and God will forgive us, it is reliant. It is the fifth petition in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. My dear friends, in the story we have seen the unforgiving debtor. He owed 10,000 talents to the king. The 10,000 talents are forgiven, but himself went and caught the, his debtor by his throat and demanded him to give him the 100 dinare. Comparing these two values, one talent is 15 years worth of wages for a typical worker, 15 years income of a typical worker and 10,000 talents which he owes to the king amount to be 150,000 years worth of income of a person. It's more than 300,000 life sentences, 3,000 financial life sentences and this 10,000 talents weigh about 204 metric tons of silver as it's an astronomical sum of almost 60 million dinari. This much of debt is being forgiven. It was excused, written off. Whereas this man went and demanded his subordinate to pay him back the hundred dinari. It's a small silver coin. It's a daily wage of a typical worker. One dinari is a daily wage of a typical worker. Hundred dinari is no trifling debt nor earth shattering debt. But he went and demanded. Is it just, does it make any sense? Does it amount to any justice? Could he not forgive his debtor? That is what we have to think about in this parable. Forgiveness itself is a miracle. So my dear friends, If you like this, please do. I am proactive and requesting you. Please click like and please do subscribe and share with your friends. Let's pray.
the lord says our god is a god who says yes for our petitions for our prayers yes says the lord i will do mighty miracles for you like those i did when i received you and rescued you from the slavery in egypt where is another god like you my god you are the living god where is another god like you who pardons the guilt of the remnant overlooking their sins of his special people we are his special people god overlooks the sins of us the elect and declares us innocent you will not stay angry with your people forever god because you delight in showing unfailing love you delight in showing unconditional love once again you will have compassion on us you will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean you will show us your faithfulness and unfailing love as you promised to our ancestors abraham and jacob long ago let's pray heavenly loving father we come to thy feet this time this moment in one accord and in one faith in the name of our lord jesus christ and in the power of the holy spirit o oh god you are the god who will show us your faithfulness you are the god you are the living god who shows his unfailing love as you promised to our ancestors abraham and jacob long ago yes god once again you will have compassion on us forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us you will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean father give us the strength of the spirit that we are able to overlook just overlook the things which people did towards us the hurt which our people give us let us give us strength to overlook them such that you shall overlook our mistakes and overlook our sins as we pray right now we shall overlook and blot out and we shall delete and we shall erase now anything any grudge we hold against anybody and you consider us and you bless us o lord in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ father our living god forgive us and bless us with the good things forgiveness itself is a miracle of a fresh start forgiveness is the miracle of a second chance so give us strength to forgive those against who we hold any grudge and forgive us also our sins in jesus precious name we pray waiting upon you waiting upon the name of our lord jesus christ that to receive a grand miracle in our lives right now this moment in jesus precious name i ask amen amen and bye bye see you next with the next parable bye bye